Hi there, welcome to Gateway Church Leads. We are so happy to have you with us. Whether you're joining us on a Sunday morning as you're remote or whether you're watching this video as part of your midweek life group, we are so pleased that you've set this time aside to spend time with us, to open up the Bible and to join in with fellowship with us. If you haven't heard of our midweek life groups, we would love to have you join us. They are all around the city and they meet up sometimes in person and sometimes they're meeting virtually. It's a great way to open up the Bible together, worship together, and live life with one another. If you'd like more information about our midweek life groups or our different cluster group gatherings, which are happening on a Sunday, please email in at office at gatewayleads.net and we'd be happy to get you some more information. We've just been settling into this new flow with the YouTube videos and we're just so happy that you found us and that you've put this time aside to join us today. There's one significant announcement, which if you don't know, there's a leaders meeting. Um, if you're one of the leaders here at Gateway, we just want to thank you for your ministry. And it's at 745 in the evening at St. Mark's on the 1st of July, 2021. If you're one of the leaders and if you're serving in a leadership capacity at Gateway, we would love to have you come and join us. Please sign up on Church Suite or there's a link in the bulletin and you can get more information that way. It's a great opportunity to eat a meal together in a COVID safe way and to celebrate what God has done in our community this year. Now it's time for the sermon. Chris is continuing our series on wisdom for life and he's doing part two of his preach that he started last week on making decisions. I know I was really blessed by last week's sermon and by the conversation we had in life group so we hope that you enjoy this preach and that it's a blessing to you today. Thank you so much for joining us this week at Gateway. If you're new or if you've got some questions and would just like to reach out to us, please do drop us a line at that same email I gave earlier, office at gatewayleads.net. Here's Chris with the preach. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. I once went hiking with my best mate, John, and we climbed Ben Nevis. It's something we'd wanted to do for a while, and we drove there. And walking uh, about halfway up, we stumbled across a large group of people. And they turned out to be Christians who were praying for a revival in the UK. And John and I were kind of a bit stomached um, that we'd come across this group. And so we joined them. They helped direct us up to the top of the mountain. And we joined them there praying uh, for revival across our nation. Um, but if I'm going to be honest, um, this group was a little bit slow and um, so as we started to come down the mountain, uh, I started to get a bit more agitated. And um, I said, come on, John, let's go. Let's go off on our own and we'll leave these people. So probably slightly rudely, I was a little bit younger then, kind of said bye bye. And we just ran off and started running down um, the mountain. Uh, then we came to kind of a cross point and, and I was convinced we should take a left. Um, John wasn't so convinced, but he decided to follow me. And basically what happened is that we got completely and utterly lost coming down this mountain. And it was dark and we were a little bit scared. Um, but the most embarrassing thing was by the time we'd reached the end of this mountain, this big group of Christians had reached there several hours before us. And because they were concerned about us, they could see our car was still there. Um, they had stayed put and made sure we got back to our car safely. It was very embarrassing. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25 says this. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. And we are finishing our series in Proverbs today. And you may remember over two weeks, we're looking at Proverbs chapter three, verse five to six, and looking at how do we make good decisions? And we've seen that actually we shouldn't trust in our own understanding. No, no, we should trust in the Lord with all our heart. We should know that God is in control. This should save us from uh, not making any decisions because we know he's in control. It should also save us from being arrogant over the, our own decisions because we know that God is in control ultimately. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then just like me on the mountain, do not lean 
on your own understanding. Do not lean on your own understanding. We are often stupid. Um, So we need to test our decisions. We need to think carefully, be the devil's advocate and think through the decisions we're making and even talk through them with loved ones. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And now we're going to look at the next section of these verses. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. I came across some prayers that kids have prayed the other day. And these made me chuckle. I wonder if they will for you. Dear God, please make my parents understand that if I don't eat salad, I do better at school. Dear God, Please forgive me for hiding my sister's favourite doll. And please don't tell her where it is. Dear God, I need you to take my, make my mum not allergic to cats. I really want a cat and I really don't want to ask my mum to move out. Quite silly. Um, and we can laugh at them and think... Yeah, they they just don't understand what's going on. But I wonder if sometimes our prayer life, when it comes to decisions, seems a little bit like that to God. Um, God, we want to do this, we want to do that, and so please can you bless us in this effort. And he's there thinking, no, (laughs) I can't bless that because you haven't understood the situation that you're praying about. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Well, isn't that acknowledging him? You know, I'm going to do this, God. I'm going to make this decision. Please bless it. I'm acknowledging you. Now make my path straight. No, that's not what the scripture is getting at. Acknowledge, the word there, has two kind of meanings. The first is, is to know God. The Q is in the word. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. No is right in the middle of acknowledge. So when we say acknowledge God, it's not just like, God bless my plans. It's, it's saying, no, know him. Be aware of his presence. The fear of the Lord, remember. Have fellowship with God. Know him when you're thinking about your decisions. Have him in mind. And then the other meaning of the word there for us is to submit to him, to submit to him, not just to know what he thinks about something, but actually to to put yourself under that knowledge of who he is. If you like, it's what James says in the New Testament about having not just faith, but works. It's knowing him and then obeying him in all your ways, acknowledge him, know him and obey him. And when it comes to knowing what God thinks about things, the Bible has been given to us as a gift. We can know the big story of the Bible and therefore know what God is like and therefore live in response to who he is. That's how we acknowledge him, by knowing his word and by submitting to what it says. And this word that God's given us is also really, really practical and helpful for everyday decisions. Proverbs is probably one of the standout books to go for when you need wisdom for decisions. Whether it's family issues, business issues, personal issues, relationship issues. Proverbs is full of wisdom. If you get into that book, you will find amazing pearls there. I guess one of the biggest kind of decisions we make in our lives are financial. Probably not the biggest, but many big decisions in your your life are going to be financial. How do you spend the money, use the money, 
uh, does or doesn't come into your life. I want to whittle through a few different proverbs to help us think about making good financial decisions. So Proverbs 27 verse 23 to 24 says this, Know the state of your flocks and put your heart into caring for your herds, for riches don't last forever and the crown might not be passed to the next generation. So when you're coming towards making a financial decision, perhaps a large one, first of all, you're you're trusting in the Lord. Secondly, you're leaning not on your own understanding. Then, Then you're trying to acknowledge him. With this proverb, we can say it's really important to know the state of your flocks. And so we could ask ourselves, am I soberly aware of my financial situation? The crown might not be passed on to the next generation, the proverb says. As in that money you think you're going to get, it might not actually come. And so when you're thinking about making a financial decision, do you know the state of your flocks? Do you know your outgoings and your incomings? Do you know your salary after tax? Do you know, if you have one, how your pension is? Do you know, if you have some what your life insurance does or does not cover. Do you know the state of your flocks? Do you have a sober understanding of your whole financial situation when you want to make one financial choice? Are there going to be some big costs coming up soon? How is your savings if you have some? A second question you might ask is from Proverbs 17 verse 18. It says this, It's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. It's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. So here's a really another good question from that proverb. What are the possible outcomes of this financial decision you're going to make? Proverbs says that actually if you loan unthinkingly, that loan may well not be repaid. In fact, Jesus says, when you loan money, expect not to get it back. What are the possible outcomes, positive and negative, of this financial decision you're going to make? Next, Proverbs 1 verse 19 says this, Such is the fate of all who are greedy for money. It robs them of life. It robs them of of life. So here's a really another good question for you when you're making a financial decision. Is this decision going to increase greed in my life? Proverbs says that those who are greedy for money are robbed of life. Is this decision going to make you um, just get more and more consumed with thinking about money? Or is it going to bring a sense of peace when it comes to money? Proverbs 22, verse 22 says this, Don't rob the poor just because you can or exploit the needy in court. So here's another good question for your financial decision. Is this going to hurt other people? I think when it comes to our emphasis on the, uh, and our understanding on the environmental issues that we're facing at the moment, this is a really good question to ask. If you have some money to invest, is it going to be invested in a good way that affects the environment? Or perhaps more smallly, where you buy your clothes from, is it going to hurt other people? Don't rob the poor just because you can. Proverbs 22 verse 9 says, Blessed are those who are generous because they feed the poor. Is this financial decision going to enable you to be generous? Or is it going to commit you to such a path that things are going to be so tight, you're not going to have anything left over to give and to share? Proverbs 21 verse 11. A hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies has no sense. So we could ask, is this financial decision realistic? Proverbs helps us see elsewhere that actually money that comes quickly tends to go very quickly. Proverbs encourages us time and time again to work hard for our money. 
And so when a fantasy, when a, an unrealistic financial decision comes your way, be incredibly careful. Proverbs 22, verse 7, just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. Is this financial decision going to put you into unhealthy debt? I think there is some healthy debt to have in your life because it can help you do things. It can help you uh, be wise with your money. But there is definitely an unhealthy debt. And a debt that should be avoided at all costs. Hopefully I've just demonstrated how, how Proverbs can be incredibly practical. Sometimes think, people think the church is just about a spiritual things and, and having, having your mind in the clouds. No, no. Proverbs is, is really earthy and groundy, if you like. It really helps us see that actually the pragmatic small decisions we make in our life can be guided by God because he cares about them. He cares about those small and big decisions in your life. And he wants to give you wisdom to make the correct decisions. So we've covered our first three steps. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And then fourthly, he will make your paths straight. He will make your paths straight. You should notice the th first three steps are all things you should do. And the fourth step is what God does. We trust. We don't lean on our own understanding. We acknowledge him. And then he makes our paths straight. And I got thinking about a, a straight path. What, what might that mean? What benefit would that bring? I can remember being in France and uh, asking for directions once, uh, and my French is uh, petit peu, very little. Um, it's not very good. And so when I asked someone directions, I, I thought I'd give it a go. And they said, oh, à gauche, à droite, à gauche, à droite, à gauche, à droite, left and right. But I'd completely forgotten which one was left and which one was right. And so I came back to the car thinking, is, is it first left or first right? And, and I was incredibly confused. But a straight path gives you clarity, gives you clarity. He will make your path straight. He will give you clarity on where to go with your life. Also, a straight path, it gives you direction. It saves you from getting lost. It saves you from cul-de-sacs. It saves you from ending up in completely the wrong place in your life where you don't want to be. No, no, it gives you direction. And, and thirdly, a straight path gives you a destination. It brings you straight to Jesus. It brings you straight to Jesus. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding, if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he'll make your path straight. He'll bring you clarity. He'll bring you direction and he'll help you get to the destination to Jesus. It's important we recognize that this verse, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, the context of it is, is a short saying in Proverbs 3, 1 to 10. And the context there suggests that this straight path could be financial and health blessing. And it's important we don't just ignore that and think through that. And ask the question, well, does this mean then, if I trust in the Lord with all my heart, if I don't lean on my own understanding, if I do acknowledge in him in all uh, my ways, will he give me financial and health blessing? The answer, I think, is no and yes. No and yes. Let me try and explain what I mean. Well, no, because you may remember when we first looked at the book of Proverbs, we were important to point out that it is a, a book of likelihood rather than promise. The book of Proverbs is one wisdom book. There are other wisdom books in the Bible that help us see that, that there are always exceptions to the rule. The classic one is, is Job, who lived a very righteous life. He did this three to five to six, but everything got destroyed. But then God blessed him in the end. 
It's also important we recognize that there is a transition from the Old Testament, the 39 books before Jesus, and into the New Testament, the 27 books during and after Jesus. Whereby what happens in the Old Testament is often emphasized as material. The New Testament transitions into the spiritual and where the Old Testament emphasizes the temporal, not everlasting, the New Testament emphasizes the eternal. There is a transition. So it's important we read this verse with New Testament lenses and realize actually the promise now, the kind of the, the reading of it now is more about spiritual straight paths and eternal straight paths that lead to Jesus. And in fact, the New Testament also promises more suffering, not less, for our obedience to God. Try telling Paul in the New Testament as he's receiving his lashes and his beatings that um, he hasn't been trusting the Lord with all his heart. That, he hasn't been, uh, that he's been leaning on his own understanding, that he hasn't been acknowledging God and that therefore his path isn't straight. No, no, no. he's been following that and that straight path for Paul meant increased suffering. So no, it doesn't really mean we're going to get material and physical blessing if we follow these three steps and God gives the fourth. But yes, in a way, it can. Well, I thought you said no. Well, it's a no and a yes. Yes, it can, because the, the, the general wisdom in the book of Proverbs about hard work, about living a good life, about caring for people, is going to lead generally to good decisions that lead to a good life. If you like, the manual written by the maker helps us make good choices. And remember, Jesus as well said, seek first the kingdom of God and he will take care of our other needs. And God does honour those who honour him, always eternally, but sometimes in the here and now too. So trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Jesus perfectly acknowledged his father. He knew what the father wanted and he completely and perfectly submitted to it. Yet his path, was made straight, straight to the cross. And it was upon the cross that Jesus bled and died so that when we don't always trust him perfectly, when we, don't, when we do always often lean on our understanding and when we don't acknowledge him in all our ways, by grace, through faith, he makes our path straight because we're now in the way. I am the way, the truth and the life, said Jesus. And so we're in him. And he will lead us, even when we fall short, to his heavenly Father. Father, I pray that we as a community and individually would trust in you with all our heart, that we'd not lean on our own understanding, that we would acknowledge you in all our ways, and that you would make our path straight individually and corporately for us as a family. We thank you for this book of Proverbs, and we pray it would leave a deposit in our hearts and lives that would last for generations to come. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.